The Changwon Sculpture Biennale celebrates its third anniversary this year. Drawing 116 artists from 14 countries, it opened under the theme, Okjo Changseng. It refers to the rebirth of a work of art with the soul of an artist. Tim Brookers, an installation artist from the Netherlands, was invited to the Viennale. For the Changwon Sculpture Biennial, um, I wanted to uh, make something that uh, relates to where I am now, to uh, Korea. So I started with buying some uh, uh, traditional Asian house elements. He came to Korea in July as part of a cooperation project launched by Korea's National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art and Netherlands Mondrian Fund. The young artist is known for staying within the boundaries of traditional sculpture while incorporating various elements of popular culture into his work. So, I heard that here, on this uh, part of the house, there's uh, a sign that says, uh, good luck that uh, the roof is strong and will not collapse. So it's some sort of spell, it's some sort of magic power, and that's what he also tries to do. With his hands, he tries to put a spell over this whole situation, and that's what I also try to do as an artist. Artists breathe life into inanimate objects. Sculptors recreate their imagination, triggered by the objects that meet their eyes. That's why the theme for this year's Biennale was all the more interesting for Tim. His mission is to transform the five stories of the five elements of Oriental philosophy into art. Water, fire, earth, wood, and metal. I don't know a lot about it, but it, it sounds super interesting to me because of this, uh, working with the materials, that's what I like. So I would like to know more about it and take a look around in Korea, what, what I can find about it. How will the stories of Oheng, the five elements, inspire him on his trip to Korea? Tim's first destination is Puan of Cholabukto province. This is the Gomso Salt Farm. It tells the story of water. In Puan, this is the sound that ushers in the morning each day. It's the sound of a rake sweeping the salt field. The salt farm workers, unfazed by the unexpected visit, warmly welcome the traveler. Uh, can I uh, use that one? Yeah? Can you? Can you? The first of the five elements is water. Water flows from a high place to a low place, leaves its mark on all things it touches, 
and gives its all. The same can be said of the seawater at the salt field. Water evaporates, giving birth to a new substance, salt. The transformation of water piques Tim's interest. If you see this, then I can't help thinking of Caspar uh, David Friedrich. It's like uh, the Hofnung with the, all the icebergs going up. It's like a, like a small landscape. Can I uh, help you with this? Thank you. Like this? Thank you. In operation for 70 years now, the Komso Salt Farm produces sea salt from March to October of each year. Salt is produced every day in summertime and every three to five days in spring and fall. Built in 1946, this salt farm is located in the inner area of the Komsoman Bay, unlike other salt fields that are found near the ocean. The Komso salt farm is the product of a man's wisdom. It follows the laws of nature and gains the basic necessities of life. Yeah, yeah. After the morning shift, Tim mingles with the workers. The cup of makoli they pour him brims with warm affection that is characteristic of the Korean people. I can imagine if you do it all day. But now, now it's good. In the morning, with the sun. Oh, mountains everywhere. Very nice. I mean, I'm, I'm not really a salt expert, but it tastes good. And the, the, the little bit of sweetness, I, I could, uh, I could find. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Tastes very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The work that started around 2 or 3 a.m. ends late in the morning. Tim is now free to explore. Uh -huh. What are you doing? Ah, 지금 이거는 그 바닷물의 염도를 측정하는 건데요. 이렇게 해가지고 이제 25도라고 써 있잖아요. 25도의 물에서 이제 소금을 만들 수가 있는 거거든요. 그래서 이제 판을 다니면서 이렇게 염도계를 가지고 그 염도를 측정하고 다니는 거예요. 25. And uh, what about uh, these roofs? Where are they for? 아, 이 지붕은요. 해주라고 하는 건데요. 지금 각 앞에서부터 하나, 둘, 셋, 넷 이렇게 차례차례 있는데요. 해주의 역할은 소금물을 가다 놓고 보관하는 곳이에요. 소금물을 만들 때 적어도 한 15일 정도가 소요가 되거든요. 그렇게 만든 소금을 비가 오거나 기상이 안 좋을 때 넣어서 보관을 했다가 어, 날씨가 좋거나 증발량이 많을 때 꺼내서 다시 쓸수 있도록 보관하도록 만드는 곳이 바로 해주라고 하는 곳입니다. 예. And uh, this is this, right? 네, 지금 바닥에 깔려 있는 게 지금 타일이에요. 타일을 깐 이유는요. 어, 증발량을 높이려고 하는 이유도 있지만 좀더 친환경적으로 소금을 생산하기 위해서 지금 이 보시는 타일을 다 깔았어요. 어, 장판은 매끄럽고 어, 물이 빠짐이 없기 때문에 더 많은 소금을 생산할 수 있지만 친환경적이지 못하다는 말들이 많이 지속, 계속 제기가 되었기 때문에 저희 염전에서는 예전부터 40년 전부터 이 작은 타일을 다 깔아서 사용을 했었고 지금은 현재 큰 타일을 사용해서 세라믹 타일을 사용해서 조금 더 친환경적인 환경에서 소금을 생산하고 있습니다. I'm wondering what I can learn from this salt pond, like the the use of the ceramics. I mean, here it's it really has its place in this landscape, these big black squares, and it's 
I think it's also for some sort of, you know, the, the contact with the earth, with the water, it's going through and the salt is staying up. The five elements first bring Tim to the story of water. What to me is super interesting is uh, that the ceramics is used to evaporize the water. I mean, that's, to me, that's a total different way of looking at what ceramics can do. I never thought of this. You know what's happening here, that the, the ceramics is heating up the water, so the crystals get there, instead of the kiln heating up the, the thing. So focusing on the water, uh, also relating to the Oheng theory, mm, what I think is super interesting is that the water is here a transporter. It's, it's bringing the salt here and then it evaporizes and the salt is, is uh, left over. So that's a, that's a new way of looking at water. He saw the extinction of water and creation of salt. In what ways will this experience inspire him? A small peninsula within the Korean peninsula, Pyeongsan is famous for its stunning beaches. It has been dubbed the Pearl of the West Coast. Its trail leads Tim to the Chesokan Cliffs, described as 10,000 books sculptured by water. Here he meets a different kind of water. The name Chesokan is derived from a river in China where Li Bai, a Chinese poet from the Tang Dynasty, drowned while trying to embrace the reflection of the moon on the water. The cliff was named after the Chinese river due to the similar landscape. Water can become an artist itself. Over the course of time, its waves ceaselessly whirled around and caressed the rocks, rounding out their sharp edges. The evidence of the years gone by can be seen in the harmony of the water and rocks. It's a novel sight to Tim. Yeah, about the water as a sculptor, at the salt pond we saw uh, the water transporting the salt and forming little crystals when the water was vaporizing. And uh, here it's another story. This is, this is super monumental and with nowadays materials uh, I would like to make a big sculpture like this, but the most, uh, most impressive is, uh, is, the, is the time wise that it takes so long to form this. I think it's like the strongest thing you can think of water. Tim wants to experience the greatness of time for himself. So I'm uh, stepping here on some uh, little snail houses and uh, the rocks are very wet, slippery, so it's best to walk on these green spots because they give a little bit of grip. In the theory of Oheng, water symbolizes new creation and change. Perhaps it was chosen as the first of the five elements for its tendency to embrace all things with its soft ripples and roaring waves. The story of water draws to a close with the crimson evening glow. This is Yeonje, a century-old house in Puan, better known as the house of Lee Gap Su. This is where Tim spent the night. Early morning, he is busy coming up with a concept for his work. For the boat, and the pole will be in here. 
That's what I also always like to do. Make some of these uh, things. And you can make some free things without thinking. For me that's really important to do sometimes. Then I have the feeling it's, it's more real or something. Coincidence. That I would like to use coincidence, not, not, not to exclude coincidence. So, uh, he jots down the details of his journey in his collage book, lest the inspirations he received slip from his mind. Wuhan is by no means a fancy tourist city, Though it does not have any exquisite structures, like a palace or a castle, what it does have are rustic yet endearing traces of the lives of its residents. Tim is about to hear the second story of the five elements. It's the story of those whose lives were based on the fertile soil of the region and of the amazing artwork that came from Earth. Wuhan was the producer of the world's best celadon. Highly interested in pottery, Tim is not about to miss out on this great opportunity. Wuhan's ah, mm -hmm. Goryeo celadon enjoyed its prime from around 1150 to the 1200s. It was here that the celadon of the most beautiful period of the 500-year Goryeo dynasty was born. At Puan Celadon Museum, you can learn about the history of Kodio Celadon and meet fine ceramics that boast both practicality and artistry. Kodio 시대에는 아름다운 푸른색의 청자가 만들어지는데요. 고령토로 만들어진 단단한 그릇 위에 반짝반짝거리는 유리질의 유약을 바른 그런 그릇입니다. 여기 보시면 푸른색이기 때문에 밝은 가을 하늘색의 유약이 발라져 있고 그 유약 아래쪽에 검은색과 하얀색의 안료를 넣어서 새긴 우리 우리나라만의 독특한 상감 청자가 가장 특징적인 그릇이라고 할수 있습니다. 음. 네. 이 작품은 저희 박물관에 있는 것 중에 가장 아름다운 작품입니다. 청자 국화문이 표주방 모양 주전자입니다. 지금으로부터 약한 750년 전에 만들어진 거고요. 이 형태의 균형이 굉장히 잘 맞고 한 군데도 깨진 곳이 없으며 그리고 문양이 선명하게 국화 상가 문양으로 들어가 있습니다. 그리고 이 유약 색깔이 푸른 가을 하늘색으로 굉장히 맑고 아름답게 구워진 정말 최고의 작품입니다. 이게 지금부터 한 750년 전에 만들어진 작품이고요. 고려 왕실에서 사용했던 특별한 작품입니다. The subtle beauty of Koryo Celadon, created by unknown potters a millennium ago, has stolen the heart of this traveler. Buan's secret to its success as the world's best Celadon producer lies in its clay. Tim heads to Buan Doyo to learn more about it. The word toyo refers to the kiln that is used to bake ceramics. The starting material, clay, is called teto. It's the beginning of all pottery. Without it, there would be no vessel to make or bake with the kiln. Tim feels the clay for himself. Here? Mm. See? It's really fun. Yeah. This process is to make a clay for the clay. Here, the clay is 
발로 밟았으니까 이제 손으로 밀어야지. 이거 바람 공기 빼는 작업. 음흠. 잡아. 이렇게 마부치에 치고 음. 야는 돌려주시고 야는 누를 거야. 이렇게. The rough clay turns into a piece of art in the hands of the artist. 자, 이제 이 상태로 이제 물레로 갑시다. 음. 네. 자, 오케이, 그리고 네, 어, 크로스 만들어 합시다. <웃음> 얘가 물을 어? 물을 많이 묻혀 줘야 그릇이 미끄러져. 자연스럽게. 돌아가는 게 일자로 일자로 yeah. 서 있어야 돼. 오케이. Okay. 자, 오케이. Okay. 자, 밀면서 올라. 그렇지. 됐어. 양쪽 다. 그렇지. 그래가지고 일로 올려놓으면 돼. <웃음> Thank you very much. <웃음> 오, 돌려가면서. And, and that's what really is joyful to look at for me. So, for me, it's not the most important thing that it's perfect or something, but that you can see that the artist and the sculpture were together for a while. 네, 흑상담 조각이라고 해서 눈, 둘이, 다리를 조각을 다시 해야 돼. Who says there is a rule to art? Tim makes a celadon piece by adding a touch of his own creativity. Once the glaze is applied, the bluish color that is unique to celadon appears. Because of its high iron content, the dark gray clay of Puan creates the soft color of the evening sky, rather than a dazzling blue. And this subtle beauty is the charm of Ruan's Goryeo Celadon. After the clay has been shaped, it's time to meet the fire. A new relationship is forged between earth and fire inside the kiln. But first, there's an important ritual to perform. It's an offering of carefully prepared food to the spirits, an earnest prayer that the Celadon pieces that have left the artist's hands would return as fine artwork. That's why stoking the kiln is said to be a sacred and fateful task. Having stepped on the clay and creating his own porcelain, Tim becomes one with the potters in their prayer. How long do you fire the kiln? Yeah. 우리가 이 전통 가마를 구면 장작 가마는 보통 한 1박 2일에서 2박 3일 그렇게 작업을 하고요. 근데 이제 제일 중요한 시간은 보통 한 1100도에서 1240도 그 사이가 제일로 중요한 시간입니다. 그리고 칸 칸마다 온도 차이가 틀리기 때문에 그 칸마다 또 장작불을 더 넣어주면서 마무리를 져줘야. A celadon piece must undergo 24 different stages. Each stage requiring the masterful touch of the potter. Wow. Wow. Koryo Celadon is the embodiment of art that breathes life into time. Of course, it's not all about the weight. On the day when the kiln was stoked, all villagers would enjoy a feast while looking forward to meeting the best Koryo Celadon. Today, Tim met the elements, earth and fire. In the burning heat of over 1,000 degrees Celsius, the clay ends its life 
and is reborn as Celadon. Just like the clay and fire, different things come together in life and build bonds. Perhaps this is the rule of life that the five elements are trying to teach. Tim returns to his room with the Celadon in his hand. The elements he encountered today have given him a small inspiration. And uh, I'm very happy we got it from the master. And um, what I'm going to do now is uh, working with the five elements of the Hoang theory. So it's about the elements meeting each other. I would like to try to set this tape on fire. And then when the tape is melting, the salt maybe can stick to it. And I drip it over. You can try something like that. We better do that outside. So now I use three elements of the Ohang theory. Uh, drawing with the dirt and the fire, of course. What I like about the fire is that, it, that it's taking something away instead of adding something. And on top, uh, the salt that stands for water. And I'm really into meeting up the next two elements, wood and iron. Another of Puan's pride are its dense forests. Tim encounters the story of the fourth element along a fur-lined trail that leads to the thousand-year-old Nezoza temple. It's the story of trees. Trees are complete as they are in nature. However, at Nezoza temple, there are trees that have been transformed into works of art in the hands of man. Can you tell us something about the environment? Yeah, the 500-meter forest trail leads to the Chonwangmun Gate, the temple's entrance where visitors rid themselves of their worldly agonies. Nezuzha Temple was built in 633 during the reign of King Mu of the Pekje dynasty. Since then, the temple suffered extensive damage during several wars, including the Japanese invasion in 1592. It was rebuilt in 1633 during the Joseon dynasty. And one tree here has witnessed the entire history. Korean temples value existing in harmony with nature. Nezosa Temple sits snugly between towering rocky pinnacles and gives a sense of comfort and protection. The building that lies before the Taeung Pojon Hall is the Pongneru Pavilion. This two-story structure was built using the traditional Grengi technique. 
Straight or bent wood pieces were placed on top of natural rocks as pillars, dispersing the building's weight and giving it stability. The temple is where you meet the Buddha, so visitors must bow their heads and show their reverence. Passing under the pavilion, they take this moment to control their minds. The darkness recedes, and they are greeted by the light. Daewung Pojun, the hall that houses the Buddha, is Korea's national treasure number 291. It's built of interlocking pieces of wood. What kind of flowers are these? Uh, 내서사의 대웅전 대웅 보전의 꽃살무는 어, 아름답기로 유명한데요. 어, 여러 가지의 문양이 있습니다. 근데 이것은 어, 봉우리 진 연꽃입니다. 아직 피지 않은 연꽃이고요. 저것은 활짝 핀 연꽃 두 가지가 조각돼 있습니다. There are special flowers made of wood. They are part of 꽃살문 or floral design lattice door, which consists of eight door flaps that are divided into three sections. Unprecedented in world architectural history, Gotsalmun is a simple form of art that accentuates the nature of a tree. The Daewung Bojan Hall houses other types of flowers as well. Although they have lost their original glamour, the passing time has deepened their colors. Beautiful wooden flowers. I I'm curious how they would look with their original colors. I saw everywhere beautiful colors on the roof, but here not. What happened? This building has been used for 700 years, and it has been used for a long time. However, the inside is still a beautiful tree. Later, I'm going to show you the tree. I'm going to show you the tree and the tree. I'm going to show you the tree and the tree. Tan Cheng, or traditional paintwork on wooden buildings, adds exquisite colors and protects the structures from wind, rain, and other elements. The two artists have a go at drawing Tan Cheng patterns. This beautiful artwork can be found at temples, palaces, traditional academies, Confucian schools, in fact, on any traditional wooden building. What's interesting is that Tan Cheng also reflects the principles of Oheng. Even its colors are based on the five elements, with yellow, red, blue, black, and white, each representing earth fire, wood, water, and metal. These five colors create Tan Cheng, embodying the harmony of all things in the universe, imbued with a holy energy that dispels evil spirits. It was relaxing to concentrate on the work. I really, I really enjoyed making it. It was really nice that it was so quiet, that uh, it was easy to concentrate. It was really good. And I love to put in all the small details. What the travelers saw and learned at Nezosa Temple will stay with them for a long time. What is interesting for me to look at is, for example, um, how it is to enter the temple. That you first uh, go through this gate with the big sculptures and what the sculptures are for. Uh, because uh, what was told to me, that the sculptures are there 
so you can leave your sorrows there. There was a dragon head and if you uh, look closely then you see that the, the body of the dragon was one of the roof uh, construction uh, wooden things. So there I also then for me see this, this game between the, the practical and the, and the symbolic and the figurative. For me that's, that's a very nice part. There's something very loose on how, uh, how the signs are written, what kind of state of mind. And I thought, but, uh, that's how it came together in my head, that it was about, uh, but maybe it sounds a bit cheesy, doing the good spontaneously. Tall yet pliable, the trees at the temple seem to encourage the visitors to go their ways, undeterred by the troubles of the world. The Pyeongsan Peninsula has been designated as a national park. The presence of the mountains, the fields and the ocean makes Puan's nature all the more abundant. Another symbol of Puan's natural richness is its red pine trees. Baking Koryo Celadon requires three tons of trees. The abundant trees played a pivotal role in making Puan a major producer of Koryo Celadon. For the Changwon sculpture biennial, I made a traditional Asian roof, and um, I would like to ask you if you can tell something about the sign we see over there. Ah, 이게 모서리 기와라고 하는 건데요. 복자입니다. 그래서 집 안에 그 나쁜 기운이 들어오지 말고 좋은 일만 많이 생기고 사람이 건강하게 잘 살았으면 하는 기원을 담은 그런 글자입니다. 그런 글자를 이렇게 새겨서 이 집에 좋은 일을 많이 있게 해 주십시오라고 하는 기원을 갖다 둔 겁니다. Hanok or Korean traditional house sits quietly amidst the red pines. But there's something different about this one. 여기가 제사를 지내기 위한 공간이기 때문에요. 여기 이 공간을 올라갈 때는 신발을 여기서 벗고 두 손을 이렇게 짚은 다음에 신발을 벗은 다음에 이렇게 올라가서 조상님께 건건한 모습으로 올라가라 하는 의미로 예 만들어졌고요. The more you know about Hanok, the more you realize how scientific it is. Hanok is the Korean traditional house. It becomes open on all four sides when the doors inside are pushed upwards, making it very cool during summer. It also has a checkered ceiling and a rectangular roof. These trees were used to bake the masterpieces of Koryo Celadon. In the past, Puan's trees were considered very important, so much so that they were managed directly by the royal family. 
recognized for their sturdiness, they were sent to Hanyang, the capital city of Chosan, to be used to build palaces. In the theory of the five elements, wood represents growth. How will these trees nurture Tim's artistic sensitivity? And I focused on the materials and the materials meeting each other. Uh, now I will uh, work with uh, wood. So. Uh, for the wood, I uh, brought uh, a lot of chopsticks and I want to make a vase in the form of a ship. That is for the Netherlands how we got in contact with uh, porcelain. It was brought by these kind of sh ships from Asia to the Netherlands. Also what I, uh, what I tried to do with uh, Letting the materials speak here with the, with the fire and the water. Uh, to do something with wood. And this thing is also from wood. I like to I like to play a bit with that in the work. Yeah yeah. Like the traditional sculpture where you can leave your daily daily sorrows and this is taking away your daily itchings. <laughs> Tim makes a stop in the middle of his Oheng journey. It's Pyeonsan Jeda, a tea plantation where endless green fields stretch on all sides. Buwan's clean air contributed to the region's production of fine tea. The magnificent scenery is a bonus. The travelers are more than happy to enjoy this peaceful moment. The generous owner of the tea plantation serves them carefully brewed tea. The view pleases their eyes. The tea delights their taste buds, and the host's generosity warms their hearts. Tim will meet the last of the five elements, metal, in Kimje, Jeollabukdo province. This is a workshop where traditional brassware Yugi is made. The Yugi master's skillful hands give a glimpse of his life that is wholly dedicated to Yugi. And uh, this there, eh? Yeah, 저기 간수라고 그래서 소금을 만들고 거기 소금에서 나온 흘러 나온 그 진액이라고 그래야 되나요? 그거가 저거예요. 간수에다 담그니까 불꽃이 붉은색으로. Yeah. Oh, Tim has a go at making Yuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hana, two, three, it's an endless repetition of heating the vessel in the fire and then taking it out and hammering it. Man, yeah, 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 yeah. Oof. 
그만. 예. 예. 이제 알아서 하시네. <웃음> 예. 그만하시고요. 저희가 이거 처음 배울 때한 3년 정도 심부름 해야 이 망치하고 이 찢게 잡게 했어요. 옛날에는. 예. 어, 야, 야, 야. The history of Korean brassware goes back to the Bronze Age. It wasn't made by just hammering the metal pieces. Rather, it was the result of a unique and scientific alloy technology. 유기가 주물 유기하고 방자 유기가 있는데 어, 이 단조 두드려서 만든 질 좋은 유기를 사실은 방자라고 하는 겁니다. 그이 방자 유기는 이제 주석이 구리의 22%의 주석을 넣어서 이렇게 작업을 하는데 어, 세계적으로 봐도 22%의 주석을 넣어서 단조하는 그 기법을 가지고 있는 나라는 아마 우리나라가 유일할 거예요. After repeating the process of dipping the vessel in fire and water alternately, its surface has to be smoothed out with a grinder. 이렇게 지, 지렛대 원리예요. 이렇게 딱 넣어. 예, 앉아 보세요. 이렇게 잡고 이쪽 손은 여기 잡으세요. 이렇게 해서 오케이. 예, 살짝 밟아 보세요. Perhaps the tool has recognized the unfamiliar touch. 이게 소리가 나면은 예? 요거를 밑으로 좀 이렇게 내려서 됐어요. 그렇게 반복적으로 여러 번 해야 되는 거예요. It's not often that one gets to use metal to make art. Because Tim mostly works with clay, he is fascinated by the encounter with this new material. The workshop triggers his curiosity. Use this machine for. Ah, 풀무라고도 하고 풍구라고도 하는데 공기를 공급해 줘서 불을 활활 타 이렇게. Ah, with the gongs, eh? 꽹과리. 꽹과리. 꽹 꽹. 꽹 꽹. 과 과. 리 리. 예, 꽹과리. 농악할 때 쓰는 예. 이 모든 금속 중에 이 재료가 이거는 이제 브론즈거든요. 요걸로 만든 이 제품이 소리가 가장 아름다워요. 아, 와. 이렇게 먼지가 나네. 오래돼서. 이렇게 아, 있네. 네. 이 소리가 어, 울림이 아주 좋아요. 예. Yeah, for metal workers, uh, um, how do you say it? I have some sort of respect for them. Most, I work most of the time with clay, and I did some things with metal, but I find that not so easy because it's it's a. Uh, more difficult to work with. Clay is, is more soft and you can form it more easy. And uh, the metal is, uh, yeah, it, uh, I would say uh, uh, more chewy or something. In the Oheng principle, metal is an ever-changing element. Tim tries out an interesting experiment using the heated metal. He pours molten metal into a vessel that contains water. What result will this sudden clash between the hot and cold bring? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I I was really happy that we could do this. Uh, I started with this uh, mud here that was really low tech and now we can really make use of his uh, of his tools and uh, and of his old uh, work that we melted. And the result is like it's amazing. <laughs> I would never think of making something like this. So that's that's very good I think that uh, it's really because uh, I'm here and working with these materials and meeting with these people. So that's super. I'm super happy with it. As an artist, Tim used to prefer the sharp Western style over the softer Oriental style. 
he could use broken or sharp pieces to make subtle expressions. He also thought that only the materials and the artist needed to communicate. This journey brought about some fundamental changes to his beliefs. The five elements taught him that instead of existing independently, everything has to be fit in like a cogwheel. In the end, this is the wisdom behind the circle of life found in nature and the lives of mankind. As his trip to Buan and Kimje comes to a close, Tim reminds himself of the purpose of his journey. Uh, what I like about the theme of the Changmon Biennial, this we create things, things create us, is that it some sort of implicates that it's uh, working together, the things and us. Listening to the stories of the five elements, he experienced the communion between artists and their works. The best moment for him was meeting the ceramics master. It is nice is that you see that the artist and the work are spending some time together. And that he is putting a lot of attention from, from the bottom till the top. I think that's very special. For an artist, the ability to communicate with his work attests to the long hours he spends with it. The endless path that a master of any field must walk is also the path that lies in front of Tim. It is too early to tell how this journey has inspired his artistic world. However, it did bring about a small change to Tim's mind. This uh, Oheng oh theory trip, uh, experiencing all the elements was super interesting. And I'm sure this will influence my work in the future. The five elements seemed to have conveyed more stories than he had expected.